So on this video, I'm going to be unboxing and doing a demonstration on the Chicago Electric double cut saw. The item number is 62488. I was going to do a review on this a couple years back when they first came out. And I bought the tool. Well, the unit pretty much failed before I even got to complete the video. So I'm going to go ahead and try it again. But this time, this is a revised version I guess it's redesigned I'm not gonna compare them because the other one was just a lemon in my opinion but again that's just my opinion and hopefully this one does a little bit better so the first thing I see here is a manual or upper owner's manual and uh, safety instructions there and an empty bag so this might be a previously used model, who knows. Usually when something comes like this from Harbor Freight the, with an empty bag, something's up. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. Looks like a little spanner wrench and the handle for the tool itself. And lubricating sticks nine of them in there so this this has already been used for sure um, it's supposed to include 10 from what I saw on the website or on the, man, or on the uh, owner's manual on the website so damn this really it really pisses me off because Harbor Freight does a lot of returns and they end up putting stuff back on the shelf so that's pretty much it I don't know if anything else is included so in order to give this tool the benefit of the doubt what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart and check out the gear housing and voila very little lube in there some more of that Vaseline crap it's actually white but since this has been obviously used before um, it's already picked up a gray color so it's it's not much lubrication for those internal uh, moving parts there so I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up put some real grease in there assemble it all together and then I'll go ahead and try the unit out So I've had this running for a couple of minutes now, I figure about three minutes, and the gear case got hot again, but this time it was able to run for much longer, uh, at least double if not more, uh, the amount of time of continuous run compared to the first time that I started the unit. So it takes a little while to get warm now, but it still does get very hot, and I was taking the temperature here with, with when I had the switch on and I was getting a really hot spot it's right there it's about a hundred right now but it's much hotter to me it feels much hotter there's another hot spot here and this is where I figure where the brushes are at this one reads about 115 was the highest actually 128 29 about 130 and the case is gonna be a little bit hard just because of the reflective paint on it and it's just a little harder to get an exact temperature reading like that says 127 but this is way hotter than that I mean just the little rubber piece here is 116 uh, the little locking button there is about 120 and let's see the, the blades themselves are 140 pretty much 138 and the bolt in the middle that's uh, about the same temperature so it got pretty hot on there um, I just wanted to point out that when you have your hand holding the unit 
I mean, you're actually going to cover up this side of the air intake, which cools down the motor. So that's why I figure this side is getting a little hotter than the other one because you're actually, well, I'm actually covering a lot of that intake there. So it's causing this side to get get much hotter and my skin or my hand is actually insulating that heat in there too. So gloves are a must for this. And just just the way the switch is positioned, I mean you're I got small hands and anybody with big hands is pretty much gonna cover that up. So that's a poor design right there. Also where this handle goes, that's actually an air intake there. And that helps pull air and push air out of this side here, which is the vent. And that thing runs hot as hell.
All right, so that was a demonstration of the Harbor Freight or Chicago Electric double cut saw. Now, as you saw in the demonstrations, I did everything from thinner materials, or I mean thin, thinner steel, aluminum, and wood to thicker steel and aluminum. I didn't have any thicker wood to try it out on, but um, that's pretty much what I stuck to, and the thinnest aluminum was about three sixteenths or actually it was about uh, one eighth and the thickest aluminum from the block was probably about three quarters thick and it was pretty much just cutting a gouge the last thick piece of aluminum that I cut was just really too much for this machine and that was pretty much one inch now taking a look at the owner's manual, I'm just going to give you guys pretty much the thicknesses of each um, type of material that you can cut. And I did go a little bit overboard um, with, with some of the stuff just because I wanted to show you guys what this can and can't do. And first off, um, PVC pipe, it could cut up to one inch. Copper pipe, one inch. Uh, steel pipe one inch which I did cut and this had a little bit of trouble with it um, corrugated sheet or steel uh, standard thickness uh, I don't know what they mean by that because there's different thicknesses but um, sheet steel up to 14 gauge and the sheet steel that I did cut was probably oh, maybe about 16 gauge or 14 gauge and it did not have any problems this uh, performed pretty well and that being that the blade was pretty much like new when I started cutting that too so um, sheet aluminum up to 1 8 now the first piece that I did was 1 8 which is this and I was able to cut the 1 inch which I did try and it did cut it but what a pain in the ass it was to cut that because the aluminum binded around here and it was cutting really weird it was cutting a notch but it also was um, it had this little thin piece of aluminum that was getting wedged in between the blades because the aluminum was pretty much binding on this and I did have the wax stick and I was feeding it every so often a little bit here and there and it doesn't matter those wax sticks suck um, they just don't really work all that well and that's just my opinion though so um, it says it could cut oak wood up to three-fourths and I don't know about that because I just don't have any oak wood or any thick wood at all anyways or scrap wood but um, that's pretty much what this machine is supposed to do or it's rated to do I really don't see much improvements other than besides the the blade here and I'm not sure if the other one had this but this one seems way better the other one was really flimsy and I don't know I like that part the wax uh, well it doesn't really do an awesome job of lubricating unless the blades are hot enough meaning that you have to do some kind of cut first and especially on aluminum once the machine gets to operating temperature I guess because it pretty much gets up to a high temperature and that's when that wax actually melts at a certain temperature to lubricate these um, blades here so if you do a lot of steel or anything or you try to do anything thick you're gonna get a lot of uh, material wanting to bind in here and it's pretty much um, all gone now, but it left really bad scarring on these blades. And there's a little raised edge, so it might still be, might still have something bind up there. It might even be steel that's <laughs> that's binded to this now. It's replaced the aluminum, and because I noticed that it will cut steel, and it also has that little wedge in between on the steel, so you kind of have to wiggle it, and you can keep it. Uh, well lubricated so it doesn't do that that great of a tool it really isn't uh, the decals are falling off it's been used and I mean somebody must have tried it but either way new one or not it's still going 
to have problems. And if you check out the Harbor Freight website and their the reviewers on there, these tools do not have great star ratings or good ratings at all. But I want to thank you guys as always for watching my videos and see you guys on the next one.